Hi, everyone. It's Dr. Ozzy here. Welcome to the More Than a Pretty Face podcast. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Lacey and I are here with another episode. There's been just some crazy, (laughs) crazy stuff happening in the world. The beauty industry is just getting bored with the conventional stuff. And (laughs) we're just looking for more innovation and excitement. Mm -hmm. And this makes for really good stories. Yes. So (laughs) So I I can't wait to talk about radical, (laughs) unconventional, innovative Uh, I don't know. We'll find out. All yeah. right. <laughs> so how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm Life's s- good? I'm yeah, I think so. What was yesterday? I like it came <laughs> and it went. It came and it went. It was a crazy day. Crazy it was a crazy day. Yeah. It went for the record. Yeah. If you saw me, I'm sorry if I was running late, but I promise <laughs> I was not eating Dunkin' Donuts. No. Even though it just opened recently down oh, the street. Oh, I'm like, from why us. would you say that? <laughs> well, you know, you go to you know, you go to like a doctor's office and you're just it's it's hard waiting. I hate to make people wait. And it's not that I don't think that your time is valuable. It's just that, you know, it's you're just trying to please everyone and you've got, you know, messages coming in and things are urgent and you're in a case and sometimes it takes longer mm-hmm. than you anticipated. I don't think people realize that medicine, you're really dealing with nature and sometimes, you know, things behave a certain way. Somebody bleeds more than you realize and you have to take longer or they faint during a procedure. Pain isn't. Yeah. uh, Well controlled. There's, you know, you have to. So I was reading a tweet or something the other day that said, what is it like having a clinic where you see patients? And the person (laughs) said something like, imagine having 30 meetings, <laughs> all <read> lasting <laughs> about 10 to 15 minutes where you have to put on a presentation, you know, on the spot, figure out what's going on, come up with, you know, the best answer and make that person happy, look great doing it, smile and, yep. you know. And then write a report about each each meeting afterwards. Each meeting after. <laughs> you could think of it like that. Yeah. I, I was like, that's relatable. <laughs> yeah, it is. So anyways, um, oh, yeah. but looks like you are well rested today, looking yes. very pretty. Oh, thank you. I would have nice dialed up had I known we were going to do a I can see your glow today. serum <laughs> kind of peeking in yeah. through your hydrotint BB. Yes, because <laughs> that's all I have on right now. I know. I'm obsessed with the hydrotint BB. I literally cannot walk out of my house without it. You know what I'm loving right now? The amount of men in our office that are using it. Yeah. <laughs> I love they it. They do love it because they don't really, because Hydrogen BB, for you guys that don't know, it's a hydrating moisturizer that has this tint mm-hmm. that just disappears. It doesn't look like you have anything on. Yes. It's like the sheen that it gives you. And for men, you know, they're not going to go for wearing foundation, mm-hmm. but this is a sunscreen. It's a mineral based SPF. 44. And so they secretly are digging it. They are. They really do like it. I just had a 73 or four year old. Yeah. And he, you know, like years of sun damage, just did some lasers with you. And he's like, I actually really like this. (laughs) It hides, like, you know, any other little blemish that I might have. It makes me feel younger. And I was like, I love you. And it doesn't, you know, <laughs> so it sort cute. of blends in and it doesn't really come off. Like, you know, mm-hmm. foundation is, rubs whenever off. I wear foundation, I'm like, ew, what is this? Yeah. It's so like oily and, it's heavy. and rubs off. It's heavy. Mm-hmm. This just is like a, it's literally just disappears. Yes. Anyways, back to your, what's, okay, you got a beauty and blemish. Okay, I do. And I really need to talk about this. Okay. And it kind of falls into that whole trend thing. And I just... I can't even. So let me just tell you. <laughs> My girlfriend in LA called me the other day. Uh huh. And she's like, So I was at the gym and this girl had, you know, her little water cup, you know, they're see through those little mouthwash. Those little mouthwash yeah, yeah, little mm-hmm. mouthwash cups. And it was yellow inside. So my girlfriend was like, Hey, you know what? Curious, what are you doing? Because she was dabbing it on her skin, you know, Mm. like giving her a facial, giving herself a facial. Um, The 
strange woman, not strange, but this other woman, she said it was her urine. What? She was giving herself a urine facial and that isn't even the worst part. She then drank the leftover. No. Yes. I you know this all of it thing. was pretty, you know, I could follow along and I could see why, you know, she was doing what she was doing. Really? But the ending, she drank it. She drank it. Get out. No, yeah, and apparently this is like trending in LA and I can't I can't even Why is I can't LA even, you guys? <laughs> LA is like a whole other I mean, beast. Well, let's talk they're the about forefronters this. of uh, of these trends. Yeah. Yes, they so are. So urine facial. Okay, let's look at it scientifically. I know it's gross, but first of all, urine is sterile, mm-hmm. meaning that, you know, it's it's sterile, meaning there's no bacteria or anything in it. And it does have urea in it, okay. which is a great skincare ingredient. I didn't realize that. <laughs> it does. It helps turn over skin cells. It helps dissolve thicker kind of excess, you know, dead skin on the outside layer of the skin. So it can give you a little exfoliation. Okay. It's also a great humectant that hydrates and attracts water, you know, so. So you're she down wasn't, with it? <laughs> I'm not <laughs> so, saying I'm so. down with it. I'm just here <laughs> explaining the science mm. behind mm-hmm. putting pee on your face. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to tell you something really embarrassing. And now that you just explained the whole urine process, maybe it's not as embarrassing. But um, as you know, Mm -hmm. my mom's side of the family is very like country, very my granny was very much, um, you know, hillbilly type of a woman, very home remedy type. And um, when my mom was growing up and even when I was younger, if we had an ear infection, my granny would make us pee on cotton ball and put it in our ear. No way. And I never Whoa. told anyone this before. And now I just told the world. She, so this she is was disgusting, ahead of her time. But, um, Your granny <laughs> from the hillbillies was ahead of her time. So she now, needs to be in LA. <laughs> LA is right up her alley. So it breaks down excessive earwax. It does. I That's guess. right. Yeah, it so does. I guess because it, it eats it through it. And... That's why it's so great for, you know, you get thick heels uh-huh. and like, you know, rough calluses on yeah. your feet. Urea cream is great for that. I mean, it was very traumatizing to even do that <laughs> in your ear. So I couldn't, I don't Whoa. think I could ever, ever put it on my face. Yeah. Or drink it. Yeah. I think it's just, yeah. As long as you, if you, if you separate yourself from that emotionally, you know, maybe yeah. some people well, can. Well, it was traumatizing. I would never do that as an adult. Oh, you know, these DIYs, they <laughs> never cease to entertain me and amuse me <laughs> at the same time. But there is some science to that. You know, I think if you were on a deserted island <laughs> and, and you were worried about your skin and you were really worried about your skin, you were getting a little rough, a little dry, and you wanted to have a little exfoliation, you would pee in a cup and put it on your face because that's what you would do. But you know, you can buy urea 20% cream as skincare formulation readily available in LA. LA is a big city. I mean, now I have heard if you were stranded on an island Mm -hmm. or like stranded in the desert Mm -hmm. where there's no water and you have nothing that you could drink your urine for hydration so you don't die. Right. Yeah. But like... You Just could, for... you know, it'd be better than drinking salt water because yeah. you would die if you drank that. So, but I still, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know, LA. I don't know. I don't know. I could It's never... like the other day I had um, a patient come in and you know, her skin was just a wreck. I mean, I could just tell she had congestion, she had clogged pores, but at the same time, she must have been over exfoliating. Obviously, it wasn't working because she had a lot of congestion. And she had these red patches. They were dry. You know, her eyes were swollen. I'm going, what is going on? <laughs> and, you know, she, of course, shows me 10 uh, photos on her camera roll of all the products she's using oh because this blog told her to use this oil. And this one said to use, you know, rose water. And then this one told her to use... Milk of magnesia 
on her face as a makeup no, primer. Oh, why? So like a um like a like a laxative. Yeah, like a, like a laxative <laughs> as that's the word I was looking for. Laxative as a makeup primer. And so was, was she thinking, from LA? No, <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> she probably may have we do have a lot of patients do. that we drive do. down from LA. So maybe she was. <laughs> it was so just... anyway, so let's get back to this. Why would you use milk of magnesia or laxatives or even like calamine lotion? You hear this too as a makeup primer. So it's being touted as a primer because it reduces oil and keeps your skin more matte for, you know, an extended period of time. So if you have oily skin, particularly in the T-zone, it can have some benefits. It is basic, meaning the skin is, is a little bit acidic. And this is too alkaline, in my opinion, and can really disrupt your skin barrier. Right. And once your skin barrier is disrupted from some of these concoctions you're putting on, then everything gets worse. Your acne flares, you can develop eczema mm -hmm. because your skin barrier is really the key to healthy, glowing skin. It leaves the bad stuff out of the, your skin. It doesn't allow bad stuff to get in and it doesn't allow the good stuff to leave your skin. So once that barrier is broken down by some of these concoctions, then it really wrecks havoc on your skin. So I would not advise this. I think it has the potential to really disrupt your skin barrier because it's too alkaline yeah. and um, not a good idea. You know, I guess it also allows the foundation to go on smoother because of the silicone content um, in that. But, you know, you can just use a makeup primer that was designed for the skin. <laughs> There's a reason why we develop products for the skin because we know that even though milk of magnesium has some great properties for you know, keeping oil under control and leaving your skin matte, but it also has some potentially harmful effects. I want to know who comes up with this. Like who TikTok, just decides TikTokers. like, hey, <laughs> let me grab this laxative and put it on my face and see what happens. You know, it might be fine <laughs> to know. do if you have a long day of shooting, if you're an actress or somebody who has to be in front of a camera and you tend to have really oily skin. And it might be fine to use periodically, but I would mm -hmm. definitely not incorporate it into your regular makeup or beauty routine because it can end up really harmful. My goodness. So. Oh my gosh. Anyways, so that's fun. <laughs> I would love to see your guys's like home remedies or like your little tips and tricks. So please DM us. I want to hear all about it. Yeah. Check us out on more than a pretty face podcast on Instagram. Let us know if you see something, you know, shocking or just not conventional. Yeah. Send us a video. <laughs> We'd love to share it uh, on the podcast because... Yes. Seems like an endless uh, it world of beauty trends. <laughs> well, I figured today's episodes could be answering your guys' DMs. Yes, we love to we hear from love, you. love, love hearing from you guys. All right. Um, first, make sure you guys rate, review, and subscribe to our podcast. And follow us on More Than a Pretty Face on Instagram. And let's get to it. I have Sarah who DM'd us stating that she suffers from perioral dermatitis and she heard that butt paste, like what you would use for a baby's butt, mm -hmm. works well in curing or helping aid in the um, recovery process of her flare-ups and wants to know what you think. Well, again, it's uh, a little unconventional. <laughs> She may be talking about products like pseudo cream or desitin, which forms a, a like a barrier to the skin. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when you have conditions like perioral dermatitis, eczema, acne, you know, there is an issue. There's a disruption of the skin barrier. We're going back to that importance of skin barrier. And when that is disrupted, that's when bacteria get in, yeast get in, you know, the skin can't stay hydrated, it's losing water. So barrier creams that are often used in diaper rashes will form a protective layer and they serve sort of as your skin barrier because your skin barrier is compromised. It's not functioning like the way it should be. So when you put that 
butt paste on, it free, it creates and acts as your skin barrier. Now, I don't recommend, you know, taking desitin or diaper rash cream, smearing it all over your face and thick. walking around with it. <laughs> it's pretty thick. You know, but I guess if you have like a, an area of dry, flaky skin, you know, you could put that on maybe overnight mm-hmm. and it will probably help because what it will do, it will prevent the water loss overnight because we lose, a, our skin loses a lot of water overnight. That's why it's so important to hydrate, moisturize. But this is a little bit thicker and forms a barrier. And and so it's not far from the truth. Now, pseudo cream, which is usually a British uh, uh, um, formula for butt rashes, can also have some antibacterial, anti-yeast properties. So not not too far off, but there are better treatments for perioral dermatitis. And I actually have a very detailed YouTube video yes. on perioral dermatitis. So check it out. I go into the causes and it can be a little bit complicated for people. Uh, so I would say, you know, see your dermatologist, watch my video, uh, the butt cream, uh, you know, <laughs> there's probably better treatments. <laughs> Thanksgiving feast is just around the corner. So whether you're the party planner or an attendee, I have just the thing for your eyes the morning after. Iglow AM is a multitasker, a lightweight concealing peptide serum that hydrates and brightens the eyes with a cooling tip to depuff those eye bags. Of course, it's formulated with SPF 50 to protect the delicate eyelid skin against UV damage. For podcast listeners only, get 20% off your Iglow AM on AussieMDSkincare.com. That's A-Z-I-M-D-Skincare.com with code NOVEMBER20. I love to see your glow up, so don't forget to tag me in your stories at Skin by Dr. Ozzy. All right, we have Shaki. Shaki. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Um, <clears throat> she wants to know your thoughts on lash lifts. Like, is it really worth it? Is it damaging? What do you recommend? Yeah, lash lifts are great. If you get it done by somebody who really is experienced, it's sort of like a perm for your lashes. So, you know, we curl our lashes, we apply mascara so that they look fuller and thicker and lash lifts will take the lashes because normally lashes go in all different directions. You know, sometimes they're not, you know, at their potential length. And so the lash lifts takes all the lashes and curls them up makes them more uniform and gives a thicker, fuller appearance to the lash. And you almost don't need to ever really curl your lashes. You can apply a little bit of mascara that will enhance the appearance. And a lot of times as we age, particularly, I know a lot of our older patients love the lash lifts because Mm -hmm. our eyes get smaller. And so that's why a lot of women love wearing those lash Mm -hmm. extensions because it makes their eyes pop like it did, you know, when they were, they were younger. So I think it works great. The only thing I would be really cautious of is you can have a allergic reaction to them, especially if you do them quite often, you can develop a sensitivity to the solution they use to perm your lashes. Now, not everybody will develop that, but that could be the worst thing is actually getting, you can get blistering, red, irritated, yes. inflamed lashes. So if you have eczema or you have sensitive skin, I would be really cautious. Uh, you might want to do like a little test spot or just do a small area of the lash. And the eyelid skin is thinner. Mm-hmm. It's more delicate. So if something is going to cause a reaction, usually it's around the eyes mm-hmm. because the skin is just much thinner and much more delicate. So that would be the only precaution. But I think they look great. Yeah. So you think they're better than just Lash extensions? Yeah. Well, lash extensions, you know, they have the adhesive, which Mm -hmm. could also cause an allergic reaction, but they actually, you know, weigh down Mm -hmm. and pull on your lashes. So eventually they can cause lash loss. And over time, once you start damaging the root of the lashes, they, they'll get scarred and they won't grow. So these, this might be better than lash extensions, but I also think it's probably a little more tricky to perform because it's, 
it's this, you know you got to break the lash bonds and then reform them so really go to somebody who's experienced who's been doing it for a long time is cautious and make sure that they put a thick layer of a protective barrier cream like vaseline or you know cerave healing balm so that protects the skin while they are doing your lash lift. Yeah. I'm terrified of that, but yeah, it's my you, eye you have your eye issue. Yeah. Some people just have them. Okay. With- I have the next one from Perta and she said that she recently flew home from Europe mm-hmm. and after her long flight, she noticed red bumps on her bum and she said, I'm 40 years old and I feel like I'm a baby again. What's <laughs> going on? <laughs> You know, buttony, I call it buttony, which is like butt acne, Mm -hmm. is very common. And uh, a lot of people have it. And, you know, in dermatology, we do skin exams and we look at the butt Mm -hmm. because you got skin there. Yeah. And so many people have breakouts on their bum that some of them don't even know it. Yeah. But the reason, you know, she probably had a flare up of it is because you're sitting for a really long time and you're sweating and you know, that friction and, and, and pressure can clog the pores. You can get built up of moisture, bacteria, yeast, and then just sitting on your bum for a long periods of time can cause that those organisms to get pushed into the pores and cause like a bacterial folliculitis or a yeast folliculitis and breakouts. What I love as a remedy for that is, well, one, avoid wearing really tight yes. clothing. And if you do have to sit, because some people have a desk job, mm-hmm. you can get those donut pillows where your butt can go <laughs> through it. So it's not like up against the chair for Aren't a long period of time. pillows? Hemorrhoid pillows or, you know, a lot of postpartum <laughs> mm-hmm. women use them to get the pressure off. And, and if you do have to sit for a long time, you know, get up and walk around. Those are all just basic tips. You can also apply a little powder to the skin. The powders help soak up moisture. And so that also helps. But if you do have it and you want to treat it, there's a spray. It's called the one spray. Mm -hmm. And it's really designed for body acne. And it's designed to sort of dry out the skin a little bit, make it less favorable for yeast and bacteria to grow. Plus, it has 2% salicylic acid and glycolic acid, which helps with the stains that are left over after your breakouts. So it helps treat the breakouts, but it also helps treat the scarring or the stains that it leaves behind. Because sometimes yeah. those stains... Stay forever. They can stay around for a really long time, especially the lower down you go, like on the legs, mm-hmm. you get breakouts and you can they just stay around for so much longer. My favorite, and I tell all my girlfriends, I use it for after I shave. Yes, when I get another it works shower, great for razor I bumps. I spray my legs and then I moisturize. Yeah, I like to do it kind of leading up to shaving, but I do it regularly because it does help exfoliate the skin mm-hmm. and and the one spray, you know, it's so easy. You just kind of just spray it. Yeah, and you can tip it upside body. down and spray it. You can it, tip so it I upside it. down and, and spray it. And so it works really well. It just has a really strong clinical smell. So if you're sensitive to that, you yeah. know, don't definitely don't spray it like in your face. Yeah. Just kind of like turn away. And spray. Yeah. And if you, some people don't want to do use the spray. If you have more sensitive skin, you can use the wipes, like the Clarify wipes, mm-hmm. the pads. Those are they nice also, too. they're not as strong as the spray, but they work great. And they're wet wipes. They're pre-soaked. They come as 60 pads. I love it for people who go to the gym because going to the gym can also cause butt acne. Mm-hmm. And, and so just, tight you know, leggings. wiping down with one of those pads right after workouts works really well. All right. Our next question um, from Christina. She said that her daughter has red eczema on her cheeks and chin. She said it's not always, it's not bumpy ever, but it is always red. And what should she do? So on her cheeks, eyelids. Yeah. I'm sorry. Cheeks, eyelids, chin, chin. So it sounds like she has, yeah, she has eczema and eczema is a chronic condition. And what that means, you can think of it like diabetes. It's sort of like your skin's natural innate nature is to be reactive and to have a disrupted skin barrier and to have uh, ability to have a compromised ability to fight off certain organisms, microorganisms and has a dysfunction in their inflammatory skin response. So Mm -hmm. you can think of it as a immune disorder of the skin where the immune system is not quite 
as functional as normal skin. And they've done studies on uh, people's uh, skin uh, that have eczema versus when they don't. And a lot of times their entire microbiome is different. They don't have a lot of the necessary yeast and organisms in their microclimate to be able to keep things in check. And that certainly plays a role in the inflammatory component of eczema. Mm -hmm. So it's not really, you know, sometimes it's not what you're doing right. It could be like changes in weather. So their skin is not able to you know, adjust and uh, be able to function when there's drastic changes. Mm-hmm. Like if you change a product or if the weather in the fall particularly oh gosh, yes. can really disrupt your skin barrier. And people with eczema or sensitive skin just have a hard time withstanding those abrupt changes. Mm-hmm. So the most important thing with patients with eczema is you've got to be on top of your skincare. You've got to be you know, staying away from fragrances, from dyes, staying away from you know, too many products, try to stick to non-fragrant skincare lines that are designed for sensitive skin. Like I love Vanna Cream. Mm-hmm. They make shampoos, they make soaps, detergents, you know, all kinds of things specifically designed for people who have a lot of sensitivity. Yeah. And there's now a lot of creams that are made with probiotics. And those are really designed for patients with eczema because their microclimate is missing a lot of these microorganisms. And so a lot of creams now have these prebiotics, probiotics that help strengthen the skin barrier, give you that microclimate that is stronger and able to fight off some of these your potential disruptions. Now, if you do have flaking and dry skin, then you really want to use a medicated cream. And sometimes just over-the-counter products like Soothe HC has hydrocortisone 1%, Mm -hmm. that reduces inflammation. But other times you need to see a specialist or your pediatrician so they can get you a medicated cream. And some people think, well, it's a steroid. It's, you know, but really steroids heal the skin. You, you've, you, the problem is inflammation. Yeah. So when the problem is inflammation, you've got to treat the inflammation. Yep. And a lot of people with sensitive skin, surprisingly, aren't aware that perfumes can trigger. That's a good point. So even though they're not spraying it directly on their skin, if they're spraying and walking into it, they're still not realizing like it goes... Yeah, they'll say, you know, particularly we see this on the neck and around the eyes. Mm -hmm. They'll say, well, I don't spray it like on my neck. Right. I spray it like on my clothes or I spray it in on my wrist. Mm -hmm. Well, it still gets aerosolized, right? And facial skin is different than body skin. It's going to be much more sensitive, especially if you have a history of eczema. So even if you hug someone who's wearing a perfume or you're burning scented candles, I don't think a lot of people realize that things like aromatherapy, you know, essential oils that are fragrant, shampoo that might have fragrance in it, all those things can play a role Mm -hmm. because it gets aerosolized. And even though it may not come into direct contact, you know, it's still it's still going to affect your your skin and 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 flaring up the inflammation that causes it. So just make, you know, make sure that fragrance you stay away from as many potential allergens as possible and, you know, get with a dermatologist because eczema just needs chronic management and inflammation is really terrible for the skin. Mm-hmm. When you have red skin or inflamed skin, bacteria, viruses, they can just get right in because it disrupts your skin barrier and you can't keep those bad things out. Yes. I love hypochlorous acid too. Again, we're talking about how eczema can get uh, impregnated with bacteria that then cause further inflammation because bacteria have these toxins they release and particularly strep and staph. Yes. And that can really trigger the inflammation and just start this vicious cycle. So sometimes you need to also control the bacteria, you know, so that's why a lot of people take bleach baths. They, um, that's a real thing we actually do in dermatology. We have them put bleach in the bathtub and have the kids soak, you know, in a bleach bath to get rid of all the bacteria that's been able to sit on that compromised skin. Mm -hmm. So it's much more complex than I think people realize. And uh, now there's actually great therapies. A lot of times though, kids outgrow it. So that's the good news. 
And before you try to do a bleach bath yourself, yes, consult with your doctor and make sure that it's an appropriate yes. uh, treatment don't, don't for just you and get the growing. right ingredients. Yeah. Don't just start filling up the <laughs> yeah. bathtub with Lysol, please. No. <laughs> but these were great questions, yes. you guys. Thank you so much for sending them and watching us. Yes, we really appreciate you guys. And you guys are the reason why we continue to make these podcasts. So if you find this valuable, make sure you hit the subscribe button and share this with a friend who may also benefit from listening in on our little beauty and blemish podcast <laughs> until next time bye, bye guys